All right, real quick, hey, hey. Uh, real quick, I just got two things I want to share before I bring my buddy up. <clears throat> First thing I want to talk about, um, campus security came in my office the other night. And here's this word I hate, Q-U-I-T. Y'all just say it in your, in your mind, Q-U-I-T, because we don't say it. But he came in my office and he said, hey, coach, tough season so far. I was like, yeah. Um, you think the players have that word? I was like, are you? Okay. I counted to 10 and took a deep breath before I just went slap off and said, look, first of all, as Christians and as crusaders, we never say that word. Aren't y'all glad Noah didn't quit, David didn't quit? A lot of people in the Bible were glad they didn't, they didn't quit, okay? So I gathered my composure, and I just wanted to make sure I share with you guys. We don't say that word, all right? Yeah, it's been a tough season. Yeah, our heads are down a little bit. But come on out Saturday. Those of you that are in town, watch us get this next victory. And at the end of the game, we will give God the glory. All right? The second thing, the guy's already been messing with me about wearing my hat. It's a prop. If y'all can read it, it's Southern Miss. That's where I went to school. And now what I want to tell you guys about loyalty and love. In my 17 years of coaching, I've worked at seven different schools. And I'm loyal to all of those schools I work for but I love my university, and I give back to my university. And I say that to say when y'all are blessed to get your degree from North Greenville University, give back. And I'm not talking about, it don't have to be money. Coming back, speak, tell your story. Coming back, sharing, telling your high school students at your school how great NGU is and what it did for you and how you got your degree. Give back, loyalty and love. I'm loyal to North Greenville because Dr. Epstein approved my hire. I'm loyal to North Greenville. I love my university because I give back. I give back monetarily, and I go back when I can to help the students that are there and remind them how important it is to get a degree. Now, my buddy, uh, we played together at Southern Miss. Uh, <clears throat> I was a center. He was a running back. I tried to block for him, tried to open some holes for him. And the short video you're going to see before he uh, comes up, uh, you can look for number 54, you'll get a laugh. That's me trying to block for him. And understand that this video is not to glorify him. There's a powerful, powerful message at the end that's going to make every last one of you in here sit up in your seat and listen, I promise you. But Chris Buckhalter is his name. We went to Southern Miss together. I was proud to say I blocked for, blocked for him, blocked hard for him, and opened some holes for him. We can show that video, and the next voice you'll hear is uh, Chris Buckhalter.
Jim and Chris Buckholder taking it in from four yards out. For a few plays later, Buckholder scored to have the lead to 20 to 18. Yeah, you're right. Whoa. Oh. You know, it's tough every time I see that, not because of the sentence, but because a young man lost his life. You know, that's a tough deal. You know, it's never easy to deal with. See, there was a time when I was in the same position every one of you are right now at this moment. Sitting before someone trying to tell me something that's going to help me make it in life. Not just in the moment, but later on in the future. How many of you have a goal to spend over 14 years in prison right now? No one. Neither did I. You never, ever made me believe that I would spend the next 14 years of my life in prison for aggravated assault and manslaughter. See, what my problem was, my coach, Coach Bauer, Mike Williams, and I can name a host of people who were active in my life and trying to help me, but yet I always made a choice to go to those meetings, sit in, clown around, joke around, not pay attention, not glean from the message. And as a result of that, I lived a rough life. I grew up in a pretty much an area like this, rural area, went to a small 3A school, um, left high school, um, good kid, good grades, AB student, a lot of scholarship offers. Had everything going for me, everything. And, uh, but underneath all that, I was the type of guy that was always making bad decisions, always hanging out with the wrong crowd, and always doing things I knew I shouldn't have been doing. Drinking at a young age. See, that's how I got all these scars in my face. 17 years old. Getting ready to turn about a month before I turned 18. Drinking and driving, hanging out with some more seniors, partying, as we say. And um, I went out the windshield of a, of a maximum. Hundred and some stitches in the face. And you would think it would end there, but it didn't. I, I continued the same lifestyle, guys, ladies. I left high school. Um, Good athlete, as I said, and I played in a Mississippi All-Star game, played in a Mississippi Alabama All-Star game, and had scholarship offers from everywhere. So I was this kid sitting here in a position that had everything a kid could want coming out of high school. Because like most of you, all I wanted to do, I want a scholarship, I want to go somewhere. And like most of you right now, a lot of you have this ideal in your head that, that man, I want to play in the, in the majors, whatever that be, NFL, NBA, you know, major soccer league, baseball, whatever it may be, you want, you want to go to the next level. That's not one of you, maybe one or two, you know, that, you know, look at it realistically and say, you know, there's other things I want to do than that. But for the most part, most of you want to go to the next level, and I was that same kid. All I was focused on was one thing. And my dad will tell you to this day, he said, man, my son, that's all my son talked about. He want to play in the NFL. He want to play in the NFL. So here I am, in, got myself in a position where I can do that. But see, the problem was when I got to USM, these same little bad choices and habits and, and, and things that I was engaging in in high school carried over. 
it carried over into my college life. And now I'm in college, I'm a freshman, so I got this ideal in my head, you know, because I'm a freshman, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna play. Cause you know how you know, some of you, man, you're gonna get red shirted. Me, get red shirted, man, you lost your mind. You know that, you know how we are when we think we're so good. And, um, and just so happened, I didn't get to play because I didn't, uh, because of my accident, I uh, ended up not getting my ACT scores. So I, I ended up with a Prop 48. Fortunately, got my year back. But I went on my whole college career, and Ken Ray will tell you, I was a terror on campus. <laughs> I was always that guy that would take it to the next level. I mean, we could be on campus just having fun. At, what we, the hub, girls would come along and, and, and uh, he, he guilty of it too, y'all. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna let him make it, he guilty of it. Girls would come along and, and, and we would just crack. Or guys would come along, we'll crack, jank, joke, you know, and mess around. But I will always be the next guy who would take it to the next level. It was so bad, I was so notorious for being a, a, a bad guy. Girls would see me and say, oh Lord, there go Buck. And you could hear them and they would turn and go all the way around campus just to avoid having to deal with me. That's how, that's, that's the bad character and the image that I had in college. You know, for some, at the time you would think it was it's funny, but in fact it wasn't. But I went on and, and, and I continued to live like this and, and um, I can't tell you the number of DUIs I had. I can't tell you the number of assaults I had been involved in. I can't tell you the number of things that I kept doing that was costing me more than I could see at the moment. So I went on and, and, and I continued this for, from 91 to 95. And uh, it was my senior year. And uh, started hearing things from people that I knew about the NFL. So here I am now. 12 hours from graduating, and now I'm getting all this talk in my ear about the NFL, the NFL, the one thing I wanted in life more than anything else. And I continue to make bad choices. You would think a guy that short in class and with this many hours left, and basically you go to class, turn in some school work, these people are gonna make sure you get out of here. I'm so focused on the wrong thing, I drop out of school, I withdrew. Because all I had in my mind was this one idea, the NFL, the NFL, the NFL. So all my focus and all my eggs went in one basket, the NFL. Go through the whole process, end up signing a free agent deal. I go with the Philadelphia Eagles, stay up there a year. I'm doing the same old things, and then I come home. Now this time, it's going to be different than any other time. Because, see, now my life is about to change. Now we're about to go into this 20-year manslaughter and 20-year aggravated assault deal. You see, all the way from high school through college and NFL, it was always I kept the wrong crowd around me. Always. I always kept people around me that was going in a different direction that I needed to go. I was always engaging in some type of activity that, that involves alcohol, and drugs, always. And because of those two, two things, it led me down a path that I couldn't just say I'm sorry, you know, and it's gonna be all right. Or I just make decision, I'm not gonna do this again and, and move on and it's gonna change it. No, the path that I'm going on now, I'm gonna have to live it. And I'm gonna have to live it for 14 years. And see, and some of you are in the same position that I was in at that time. You're in a place where you have people around you who care about you and want to help you that you can be a better person, not only for yourself, but for the people you're around, for society, your school, your family, so forth and so on. But see, like some of you, and I guarantee you, the percentage don't lie, some of you will do the exact same thing that I did. You will ignore the message, you will ignore the people around you, and you will continue to do things the way that you think they should be done. You know, the Bible says it. You know, I ain't going to drain you with scripture. I'm just going to say, he said, there's a way to send me right into a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. You see, you can go on and you can think in your small mind that the way you do things is the right thing, and I guarantee you, you can mark this on the calendar today. I guarantee you, if you continue to go against the grain, you're going to pay. See, that death is not always you physically losing your life. See, death, for me, was not only someone losing their, their life, but a 20-year sentence. 
And not only did that affect me, it affected one, two, three, five other families. It affected my dad, my mom, my brother, my sister, my kids. It affected a whole lot of people. See, a lot of times we don't pay attention to these things because we're so focused on ourselves, we don't see the big picture. See, what you do is not only going to affect you, it's going to affect your family. It's going to affect this school. Guys and girls, you got to wake up. Or I promise you, you'll find yourself in a situation as worse as mine, as worse as mine, or just a little less, more than you can stand. Don't repeat it. And the best thing for you to do is now start making the adjustments. I didn't. Come home. Get home. And quite naturally, you're going to do it. Got to look my boys up. Got to find them. There's things we just got to do. We just got to do. And we continue down the same path for the drugs and the alcohol and, and being in places we shouldn't be, so forth and so on. And one night, and, th and that's the thing that I, 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 I beat in my boys' heads to this day. It only takes one, one. Not two, three, or 20, or 15. There's nothing written in the book that says you got so many chances before we bring the hammer down on you. One night, in a matter of seconds, because one of my, one of my so-called partners, I just got to go get this money this guy owes me. I just got to go get it. Man, we see this man every day. And now, all of a sudden, we just got to go today. You know, I'm not thinking that now. This is me thinking after the fact. And when we go over there, it went from just getting the money to a whole bunch of other stuff. And when it was all said and done, a man laid in the floor dead. Another man shot up. My kids lose their father. Langley kids lose their dad. And three other dads, kids lose them. One decision, one bad choice. And you're no different than me. You make that one bad decision, that one bad choice, Who's to say it won't cost you as much? Man, life is not a game. If you play with it and don't respect it, it has something for you you don't want. Because of that, I got sentenced to 20 years on both charges. Now I'm going to prison. I don't go to the little, what they call the little comfortable places of prison. I went to Parchman, Mississippi, and for y'all that don't know anything about Mississippi, that's the worst prison in Mississippi. That's the, the one that you, they have movies about. It's that prison. And going into prison, you have, you, you, you got one or two choices in most cases. And it's just simple. You going to be the man or you going to get dealt with. So I had to go deal with all that and going through all that. I find myself in a position where I was talking with an older guy, Willie Washington. I'll never forget him because he was one of the guys that, that really started me to thinking about my life as a whole. And um, he didn't say anything, you know, dumbfounding. He just stayed the fact. He said, Buck, man, you... You're a big guy. You're in prison. And the rules have changed. You're a threat to some. Just because of my size. Not because of anything I was doing. Just my size. And, uh, and he said, one day, man, you know, some guy's going to get this idea that, you know, this is how they're going to move up the chain. Somebody, they're going to send somebody at you. And nine times out of ten, they're not going to come at you when you're standing up and able to see them eye to eye. They said, man, they're going to hurt you while you sleep. He said, in fact, they're probably going to kill you. So now, you know, I got to take a step. I'm taking a step. Oh, wait a minute. What? 
man, I'm just trying to do 20 years and go home, whatever that is. Dying. So now it got, gets me to thinking, so now I'm trying to get things together. I'm, here I am now trying to straighten out my life from behind, in, behind the walls. Okay, now I'm pulling away from people. I'm stopped doing things. But man, my life was still messed up. Some stuff hadn't been worked out. I'm still in the same position. I just don't, you know, move some little gray areas out of my life. I'm in the same position. So what happened is, you know, on, uh, uh, they have like chapel services in prison. Thank God for that. And uh, what it is, you know, people come in, and when they walk in, they walk in with the Bible. And, uh, and, and although I know this Christian school, I know some of you, you just, you don't want to hear that. You, you don't even want to see that. You, you're probably at the point when you, when you see a Bible, like, oh, God, here we go. I was that guy. Man, a man to come in, he'll walk through the door, and you spot him with the Bible hanging to his side, and I'll take off. <laughs> man, I don't want to hear that right there. I did that for about a year, running, running, running. And then finally one day, you know what? I said, man, look at here. Twenty-some years, and your best decision maker has landed you in prison. Twenty-some years. Your best decision making got you in prison. I said, what the worst can happen if you go sit in and listen? I did it that night. And he came to the point where it was decision-making time. And in prison, you know, they got all type of labels. Now, the guy that jumps up and talks about he want to be saved, you know, he's weak, he's a coward, he's just trying to get through prison and so forth and so on. So I'm in the back, as usual, looking around, wondering who's going to get up. I knew I wasn't. But I thank God that he is who he is. That his dealing with me wasn't predicated on just that event at that moment. Because it was later on that evening, and I'll be the first to say I didn't have a Paul and Democritus experience. I didn't see the light and scales over my eyes and so forth and so on. But God dealt with me in such a way that before that night was over, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that's when my life changed. And I know people are going to tell you a lot of things. They're going to tell you, well, if you do this and you do that, your life is going to be this way and, and you're going to be all right. You see, but at the end, you may be. But when your life is over, now what? That's what you have to deal with. Now what? And I dealt with that. And I can't say I am saved. I'm saved because of what Jesus Christ did for me. And the one thing I know when I look back at my life and, and I see those opportunities when I was at First Hattiesburg and uh, Hattis First Hattiesburg Church and, and I was sitting in that corner and, um, and, and Pastor Jeff was trying to talk to me and I didn't want to hear that. And I said, now, just, you know, the hypothetical, what if I'd have made that choice that day to change my life? What if? Now, see, some of you are in that same position. You haven't. But just think about it. If you do, how will my life change? How much better will it be? My life is great now. And see, I went from after all that, I end up graduating from New Orleans U Baptist Theological University with a bachelor's degree in Christian ministry. And all the time, I get to find myself in positions like this where I get to tell young people that, you know, the choices you make, they're going to have an effect on you. You know, it's plain and simple in the, in, in the Word of God. He said, you reap what you sow. And me, this being a, real, a rural area, you know, if, if you plant corn, and, and you, you, you do your rows and you lay your corn out. And there's no guarantee that when that stalk come up, there's going to be one ear or two, maybe three, maybe four. See, that's the thing about sowing. You, you don't know what's going to come up. 
And if all you sow, if all you plant, if all you deal with is bad choices, being in the wrong places, hanging out with the wrong people, you can be guaranteed that you're going to eventually run into that moment. You're going to have it. Life, life is going to be what it is. And that's going to be based on what you do with it. I've been there and I've done it. And I can tell you, being on this side, it's so much better. You avoid a lot of things. You stay away from a lot of things because you know, just simply because of what, of serving the Lord, or how important it is to live your life a certain way. I wish I could go back, not just for my sake of those years, but for others' sake. And I just pray that, that, that you all take a moment and just, you know, when you have free time, to look at your life and look at the choices that you're making. Look at the people that you're surrounding yourself around and ask yourself, are these things and these people beneficial to me? You know, if I just did that, my life would have been, man, my life would have been awesome. I ruined my dream because I didn't do the things I was supposed to do. And you can ruin your dreams if you don't do the things you're supposed to do. Just take a chance and reflect. I don't care what anyone says, I, I've lived it and I've done it, and I know from my own personal experience that serving Christ has made my life better. You know. And I just pray that you will take a chance and look at that. What you got to lose? I mean, if you serve Christ, what, what do you have to lose? From what I've read and experienced, I, I know there's more of the game than there is to lose. And I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to talk to y'all, and I, I appreciate the opportunity to share, you know, my story. I said, um, don't be that one. Don't be that one. You got an awesome, awesome, awesome chance to do some amazing things. But all that's left on you. You have to make that choice. Just like I had, I had an awesome coaching staff that loved me not just because I was a good football player. These people genuinely love me outside of football. And I thank God for people like Kenny Ray, guys I play ball with. And I appreciate administrations like this that's willing to let people come in and tell you that you got a chance only if you do it the way it's supposed to be done. With that said, I'd just like to say thank all of you, everyone who had a part in this. And I encourage every one of you that's sitting here, take advantage of what you have in front of you now. It's the one and only chance you got at it. So my advice to you is to get it right the first time. With that said, I, I believe I'll close in, close in prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this day, this morning. And Lord, I know there's, there's someone who's out here that, that needs your help. And uh, I know sometimes we get stubborn and we think we can solve and do it all ourselves. But Lord, I ask that you would give them the courage to step out and, and to get that help. I know, Father, you put people in place to help Every individual that's in here now, you have chaplains around and you have coaches and you have administrators that, that genuinely care about the welfare of every man and every woman in this building. And Father, I just ask you, you will give them strength to stand up and, and be brave enough to withdraw themselves from those things that will cause harm to, to their image, harm to their lives. And Father, just give them the strength to stand up and live in a, in a mighty way that shows that they love you 
and they want to please you in all that they do. So, Lord, as they go out and participate in the various activities, I ask you to keep them safe and give them all that they need to be successful in your name. And it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.